All right. Good morning. I'm Amy Snyder from the Connect and Communicate Series Planning Committee. Thank you for joining us for Multiverse of One Shots, expanding first year information literacy instruction across the curriculum. This discussion will be recorded and it will be made available to Pennsylvania Library Association College and Research Division members through the PALA CRD YouTube channel, as well as sent to registrants and available on the CRD blog. For this discussion, you will only need a headset or speakers. We encourage you to ask questions in the chat box at the bottom right throughout the discussion, and we'll attempt to include your questions as appropriate during the discussion or at the end. We'll also do our best to assist participants with technical issues. Please post those issues in the chat box as well. This session is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Library Association College and Research Division's Connect and Communicate series. I'd like to thank the CRD board for, su for supporting the Connect and Communicate initiative and the other Connect and Communicate planning committee members, including Andrea Pritt, Adam Balchunas, Christy Alderman-Ritter, and Rana Lee Choco. Please contact any one of the team for information about becoming a PALA member. This project is made possible by a grant from the Institute of Museum and Library Services, as administered by the Pennsylvania Department of Education, through the Office of Commonwealth Libraries and the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, Josh Shapiro Governor. And finally, I'd like to thank and introduce our presenter for today's event. Cecilia Lastly is currently the Instruction and Student Success Librarian at Washington and Jefferson College. She earned her MSLIS with a concentration in cultural heritage informatics from Simons University, from Simmons University in 2022. Her work centers around advocating for primary source and information literacies and fostering student engagement in academic libraries. Welcome, and with that, I'll turn the presentation over to Cecilia. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you so much, Amy, to, for that introduction and to the Connect and Communicate series team for this opportunity. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screens. Please give me one second. Okay. All righty. Um, can you all see the PowerPoint okay? Yes. Awesome. Great. Um, so um, as Amy mentioned, I am currently the Instruction and Student Success Librarian at Washington and Jefferson College in Washington, Pennsylvania, outside of Pittsburgh. I work at an institution that sits on the ancestral land of the peoples who are part part of the Monongahela culture, the Osage, and the Shawandis Tula. Um, today, we'll be talking about first year information literacy instruction. I'll first tell you a little bit about W&J and then our multiverse of approach to first year information literacy instruction. Then we'll discuss balancing this kind of program and other challenges. Finally, we'll wrap up with Q&A. There will be opportunities for you to participate throughout the presentation part of the session through the Padlet, which is linked on the slide and in the chat. Um, Amy and or Christy will put the Padlet into the chat when the prompts come up a little later. Thank you all again for being here and let's get started. W&J is a small private liberal arts college located about 45 minutes south of Pittsburgh. The college was founded in 1781 and currently has approximately 1,100 students, almost all of whom are residential. The majority of our students are from Pennsylvania. We have six librarians, including our director and archivist, and three professional staff in the library. So what is involved in our multiverse approach to first year information literacy instruction? Why do we even need a multiverse? Great questions. Like many academic libraries, first year courses are bread and, butter, bread and butter when it comes to information literacy instruction. They're an opportunity to welcome students to campus and get them up to speed early in their college careers. Fred Set and Schmillen discuss in their 2022 article, Fostering Critical Thinking in First Year Students Through Information Literacy Instruction, that these sessions are also opportunities to foster greater critical thinking skills all of which is critical to their success as college students. While these are great goals, Goodset and Schmillen report that many libraries are frequently trying to do too much in one-shot one shot instruction sessions in first-year classes, and W&J is no exception. In addition, Christina Hattie, Jennifer Horton, and Jonathan Vossler argued at ACRL 2023 but the one-shot structure is not ideal for incorporating all of the information literacy and critical thinking skills 
librarians would like to impart to first-year students. Patty Horton and Gossler have a point, squeezing in as much material as will fit into a 70 or 105 minute session is challenging for librarians to teach and students to retain. However, the one shot is the only feasible tool that many of us at particularly smaller institutions have at our disposal for a wide variety of reasons that could be their own session in and of themselves. How do we find a solution that works to fulfill our common goals outlined by Goodset and Schmillen while wrestling with the pedagogical challenge of the one shot discussed by Hetty Horton and Vossler? The multiverse of one shots is our current solution to this conundrum at W and J. The three universes within this program are new student orientation, first year seminar, also known as FYS, and English composition or comp. Each universe has a different objective, which you can see on the slide. FYS and COMP are going to be the focus of today's session because we don't yet have any data about whether or not our efforts in orientation had any impact. We hope to assess this qualitatively, th primarily through interactions with students in FYS and COMP throughout the academic year. FYS is a required class for all first year students taught by faculty across the college during the fall semester. It is designed to welcome students to WNJ, college academics, and the support services available on campus. The library has been integrated into FYS, into the FYS curriculum through instruction sessions and a personal librarian model since 2016. Our personal librarian model consists of each librarian working with approximately four to five FYS classes in their instruction sessions. The goal behind this is to give students a go-to person in the library, even if that librarian and is not their major's liaison librarian, and to make communication easier for faculty. In terms of the instruction sessions themselves, my colleagues have tried a variety of formats over the years to figure out what is going to be the most successful for students while still gaining faculty buy-in. Recently, the assignments in, given in FYS have shifted away from more traditional assignments that pair well with information literacy instruction, like research assignments. And so we have tried to calibrate our objectives to meet the new structure. For the past two years, our objective has been to familiarize students with the library and our services through a plug and play session that takes the form of a scavenger hunt. This is very popular with the students, gets them engaging in different services around the library, and fits with the faculty members' desire for easy integration into their courses. I would like to give credit to my colleagues at WNJ, especially Beth Miller, for her work designing this scavenger hunt style one shot. This session and the objective that we aim to fulfill within it work really well within the multiverse model because it gives students a fun, low stakes, introduction to the library early in their college career with the potential for additional visits for more in-depth sessions, depending on their FYS class. Without repeating too much of the information literacy content they cover, we cover in COMP. COMP is WJ's writing class for new students taught, by, dur taught during both the fall and spring semesters by a combination of faculty and adjunct instructors. We began our work with COMP during the fall 2022 semester, so this relationship is still fairly new. While assignments vary greatly by section, they are all more traditionally research and argument-based projects that are ideally suited for information literacy instruction. We work closely with the faculty and instructors to concentrate the session on the element of the research, on the elements, excuse me, of the research process with which they feel the students need the most help. Often this includes search strategies and source evaluation. Depending on the length of the session, we can sometimes even offer an overview of the process from topic development through source evaluation, but that is a lot of information to throw at students at once. Research guides are also popular for comp to help with the volume of information we're giving the students in one session and to allow for different types of learners to process the information at their own pace. So now I'd like to hear from you all. Please use the Padlet to share 
how you approach first year information literacy instruction, and we'll come back together in about five or so minutes. And we'll get this going. There we go. Okay, so this is cool. So some people are having super tailored classes, others are doing um, a mix of synchronous and asynchronous, others are having, um, focusing on FYS, but having multiple sessions, which is something that we've tried over the years. Um, we've seen things varying based on the librarian involved. Um, yeah, consistent buy-in is a big thing that we'll talk about more in a minute. Um, oh, cool. Somebody else is doing a scavenger hunt. This is awesome. Um, not the class isn't always required. Next, oh, cool, somebody has a Canvas module, that's neat. Flipped classroom sounds neat. Yeah, our scavenger hunt's kind of like an open house. And don't feel pressured to answer all three columns at this point. We will come back to the other two columns later on. Um, oh, a selfie tour sounds kind of fun. All right, we've got about two more minutes left if anybody has any more thoughts on the um, first question on the Padlet. And feel free to like interact with each other's answers too. So it seems like we all have a lot of overlap, which makes some sense. We also do this series of workshops that sort of tie in with our FYS class. They're called Scholar Sessions. Um, and we have varied attendance um, and engagement. We did a kind of like trivia style one this year and that seemed more popular than other ones that we This is neat how somebody's um, bringing it into the ACRL framework. That's cool. So 
itself is being popular. We've had professors ask like students to go around campus and as proof that they've gone to the different offices, they have to take a selfie, but we haven't asked folks to do selfies. Alrighty. So thank you all so much for sharing your thoughts in the Padlet. It's encouraging that we have so much overlap, but it also means that our um, challenges are probably in common a little bit as well. And so, um, so how do we balance this multiverse of one shots for us at W&J? So as previously mentioned, the assignments in FYS and Comp help keep us, help keep the sessions distinct. However, it's a challenge to balance comp con session content when FIS faculty occasionally assign research assignments and they come back for a second session. We normally take the stance that repetition is good for everyone in these cases. The other challenge is balancing librarian time. This was an understandable concern raised when I proposed the multiverse solution to my colleagues last spring. All six librarians are personal librarians for FYS. How can we add another thing to an already busy fall? And so the current answer is that because there are fewer comp sections between seven and 11 per semester, not all librarians need to help out every semester. In addition, because of the nature of the sessions, we push FYS to the beginning of the semester when our session would have the greatest impact and push comp towards the middle or end of the semesters, the common time for research assignments. This is the first year of trying this format and plan. And so I'm excited to see how it plays out and what my colleagues think of it at the end of the semester and year. So since this is the first year implementing this system, we are a long way from working out all of the kinks. We are still not sure whether or not we've struck the right balance for librarians time. Despite enthusiastic buy-in so far with the comp program, our involvement with it is not set in stone and varies largely based on professor. We are also looking for ways to incorporate primary source literacy as that was a valuable part of past iterations of the FYS session that we had to let go of in the shift to the multiverse of one shots. Finally, a multiverse of one shots are still one shots. And so we still find ourselves pressed for time and cramming too much information into one session. So what challenges do you all have or, or with your first year instruction? How have you solved them? Do you have solutions for us to try at W and J? And so we're gonna go back to the Padlet and please share your thoughts for the next 10 or so minutes. Um, and so we're gonna focus on those latter two columns. And so, oh, awesome. And so we've already got a fair number of responses about challenges, student engagement, faculty buy-in or elimination of courses, that would be really tricky. student engagement. Too many sessions, not enough librarians, yep. And students have a varying levels of library experience exposure. Yeah, that's definitely something that we are encountering at w &J, um, particularly as we're entering the era of students who were in that like core time of high school information literacy instruction in those first few years um, when 2020 hit. And so that's been something that we've had to adjust to a lot. And so that was, um, that and feeling like we were trying to stuff way too much in without an assignment to sort of incentivize them was our big um, sort of motivation for shifting to the multiverse of one shots um, and for 
reaching out and doing a pilot with comp and seeing about if we could get that faculty buy-in and if it was possible. And so those were the kinds of challenges that exactly that we were facing when we decided to pursue this kind of idea. I'm intrigued by this one about librarian buy-in and academic freedom challenges. Um, I'm not sure what that person is talking about, but if they have more, then maybe they can elaborate. Um, yeah, faculty buy-in, too few librarians, yeah. Yeah, without an assignment, it's really hard to get students to pay attention or to like engage at all. Um, and so that's why we wanted to sort of combine our efforts. We're like, professors not even wanting a whole class one shot. I feel that. Yeah. 10 plus sections does sound exhausting. I am sorry for whoever posted that. Faculty understanding of what librarians do. Yep, that's a whole other outreach fun puzzle. Um, so let's talk about some solutions. So yeah, connecting with coordinators, exactly. Um, yeah, and so we are really grateful to have a nice working relationship with the present FYS coordinator um, and I, uh, talked multiple times with the English department chair, who's sort of the coordinator for comp at our institution. And so that having their buy-in was really essential, um, particularly for getting those like last few who maybe don't want to take the time. Yep, and sometimes you just gotta take the wins that you got. Oh, Live Wizard, yeah. That's so cool that you like made a game in Lib Wizard. That's awesome. Yep, pre class prep. Yep, I always do that too in my sessions, emphasizing appointments and that the library is here for them. Oh, cool. Somebody's writing a study. I can't wait to see your findings and if you publish them. Um, oh, an online module. Um, and that's neat because that mentioned there were several folks on the approach that mentioned an online, whether it's integrated into Canvas or an asynchronous session of some sort. And so interesting that um, it probably just shifts the time burden, right, to, to before the semester begins. Um, yeah, and so um, I know that there was a question about primary source literacy that was sent in before um, the session. And so this is a big thing that um, we're really missing this year um, because we had an option for a plug and play session with the college archives um, about primary source literacy. And that was a really great session that was part of FYS that, and so, um, we're trying to work out a different way of thinking about the comp session that um, will let us um, act, have more of those elements of primary source literacy and thinking about different types of information. Um, but again, we've got sort of wrestling with how much we can accomplish in that 70 or 105 minutes and what's actually going to be relevant to their assignment, which is the parts that they're gonna retain and things like that. So that's our big thing right now. Yeah. Um, appointments are great. It would, I think faculty communication is a really critical thing that 
I think everybody struggles with um, getting faculty to communicate with us. Document that. That sounds neat. Well, that sounds awesome. That sounds like a really awesome way to deal with, to handle primary source literacy, particularly if it's like relating to the class topic or something like that. That's awesome. And then you're bringing it into source evaluation. You don't have to try that. That's cool. Relating to them more specifically, yeah, that's because you're tied into their subject area. That's awesome. These are great. Um, yeah, and so I think we'll come back together if that's all right. And so thank you so much for your um, participation in the Padlet. It was really kind of encouraging to see that we all have related challenges, but hopefully by coming together and talking about it a little bit, we can um, find solutions that might work for some or all of us. And so um, it's really been an honor to share this program with you all and to learn from you all in the Padlet. And so thank you again. Um, and what questions do you have? And here is my contact information if you would rather reach out after the program or if we don't get to your question, and thank you so much. I'll go ahead and stop my share. At this time, feel free to put questions in the chat box. There's a bunch of us, so feel free to also raise your hand if you would like to come off mute. Um, but while you're thinking of questions, I just want to point out that um, we're going to post a link to the evaluation survey in the chat box. Um, it's important that you please take the time to submit your responses as we are required to submit evaluation data as part of our, our LSTA grant application. And Christy just posted that, so thank you. There's a question, do you assess first year info lit at your institution? If so, how? Yeah, so that's a great question. So um, I am relatively new to my institution. And so while I have been here, we have been on a revamp of college-wide assessment. And so that is something that we are looking at how we can do. And so if anybody has any suggestions or um or ways that they do it that they find effective. I really um, would love it if you could share it in the chat. Um, but unfortunately, we are still figuring out. Um, we do um, also participate in, the one thing that we have done throughout is, um, um, is um, we are part of a larger survey that our Office of Institutional um, effectiveness runs on first year students. Um, and so we do have some library related questions in that survey. And so that gets us a little bit of quantitative data. Um, but I think we're, I personally would like to see a little bit um, more when we evolve our assessment plans future. So there's another question. Um, perhaps you mentioned this, but I'm wondering how many librarians are at WNJ are working within this multiverse with you? And do you do any first year information literacy instruction that's tied to specific disciplines, majors on your campus? Yeah, so these are great questions. So um, for anybody who came in late, so we are six librarians at WNJ. We all participate in the multiverse, especially in FYS. Um, as we all are personal librarians for that. Um, in terms of first year information literacy instruction tied, tied to specific disciplines, it depends on the department and the librarian's relationship with that department. So I know that some of my colleagues um, have um, particularly, Sam, I'm gonna call you out, Samantha Martin does work with her psych introduction classes that is often populated by first years. 
Um, and there are others of my colleagues who um, do get to work with the introduction level or first year classes in their specific um, departments, but it, it why varies widely based on department buy-in and things like that. We have also used project outcome in the past, I think, yeah. I have a question and I apologize if I missed this. Um, you mentioned you participate in orientation. What does that look like? Is that a structured thing? Does students stop by? Yeah, so we had, this was the first year that we were a part of orientation in a while. And so um, we were really lucky that um, our colleagues in belonging and engagement were also revamping orientation. And so we were able to participate several times throughout the week of orientation. So we had, we were a stop on the campus wide tour where we just gave a really brief spiel about the library. Um, we kept like, you know, less than five minutes kind of thing as they were moving through with their FYS classes, um, which are also kind of their like orientation groups. Um, and so because we were gonna see them again in FYS and hopefully again in comp as well, we wanted to keep that pretty short. And then we also had an opportunity to table at a community fair as part of orientation, which is really um, just making those like personal connections and um, showing that the library is a friendly place to be. Um, and then the last thing was, um, we partnered with the Writing Center and the um, uh, Program for Academic Success and Disability Support Services to do a presentation about college preparedness. Um, and so that was really um, a nice opportunity to nest us within the sort of larger academic support system on campus for the first years that had mixed attendance. Um, we did it twice. And um, and so all of those things um, were so far seeing that the tour had the most impact just based on um, our qualitative and um, perspective um, assessment sort of interacting with students thus far. But I'm also, um, it's sort of hard to tell if that presentation had any impact or not. Um, other than, you know, just kind of getting us in their heads more than once and then repetition being the best for retention. So, oh. Thanks for clarifying. Mm -hmm. It's so cool. It was a really great opportunity, but since we only just did it in August, um, we really didn't have a lot of um, data or time. And so that's why it did not make it into the like final talk. No worries. Um, yeah, so the question from that was submitted before the session. Um, yeah, someone had posted Are archives and special collections involved in the first year student programs in any way? Would there be in the future if not? Yeah, and so um, our archivist, Sinead Ply, is amazing. And so, um, as part of FYS, the scavenger hunt does include. Um, is a sort of tour component that goes with it. And so we do include the archives on that and give information about our sort of collection highlights and um, how to access the archives because we um, want to encourage students to use them as much as possible. Um, and that was, that's was that been the real thing that we've been missing um, in our shift to the multiverse is, um, so the previous year when we were only FYS really, um, we had a variety of plug and play options for faculty to choose. And one of them was working with archival materials, um, having a class work with Sinead. Um, and that was really great. Um, and so we're trying to figure out ways to include primary source literacy and increased promotion of the archives into comp, which feels like, um, a better fit for those kinds of skills. 
at the moment. Um, and so thanks to everybody who gave suggestions in the Padlet um, and things like that. So yeah, so it is, we do involve them. And also um, there are particular FYS classes that gravitate towards the archives or particular comp assignments that do that too. So for example, there's an FYS going on right now that's about um, W&J alums. And so they are working very, very closely with Sinead. And last year there was an FYS about sort of the 1920s and the um, 2020s, sort of then and now. And so they also worked in depth um, with the archives. And so that was a really great opportunity for them. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Rolling through the chat, making sure I didn't miss anything. Any other questions? There aren't other questions. I can also share some sort of like pleasant surprises about this program, if that sure. would help. And so um, I think we were really pleased about the amount of faculty buy-in from comp in the past year, because um, it was something that we haven't done um, in a sort of consistent way in a long time. And so um, that was really encouraging and I think made, gave us the confidence to explore something like the multiverse of one shots as sort of our system for, first year information literacy instruction rather than trying to squish it all as much as possible into FYS. Um, and so um, that was a really pleasant surprise. And I think um, we also really appreciated student feedback that we've gotten over the past um, year about sort of repeating content and things like that. And so that's been something that we've been working on tweaking um, for this semester is sort of separating those content out a little bit more clearly um, so that students don't feel like they're getting the same thing each time. You mentioned that, you know, um, Comp is a, a new um, re-addition to your multiverse, um, so to speak. Uh, how do you plan to, do you have, have you thought about how you're going to assess that at the end of the semester or things that you already might tweak for next semester? Yeah, so um, again, our like formal assessment, we're still working on um, what that's going to look like as part of the new college-wide approach to assessment, and so that will be something exciting. Um, I think I personally um, I've been doing a lot of the teaching for comp. And so what I do is um, I run a brief feedback survey at the end of all my classes. And I say, what's well, one thing you learned today? Um, and, and it's a very brief way of seeing what stuck in mm -hmm. that massive unloading of content. Um, and so um, that we often sort of have to do because that's what the professor is asked for. Um, and so that kind of helps me figure out um, what I need to be doing differently to make sure that my objectives of their sort of key takeaways are reflected in some in their key takeaways that they learned. Um, and so in terms of improvements for next semester, um, we are the faculty change up a little bit each semester, so it will be exciting to have some folks who were last spring come back. Um, and then also we have um, a possible partnership. So the director of the writing center is one of the instructors for um, comp. And so um, the, she and I might do a pilot where we try a more embedded mo model next semester and see what would happen if we actually had more than one session in comp. Um, could we get, um, achieve sort of um, that goal of hitting primary source literacy in comp um, if we had more time? So that's something that I'm excited for with the future um, for this program is if that works well, 
is there a way to kind of convince faculty for a little bit more of their time uh, kind of thing. So that's kind of what's on the horizon for comp, yeah. Yeah, it's great when you have someone who's willing to try try new things with you. Yeah, um, no, she's a wonderful campus partner because in addition to being the director of the writing center and the comp instructor, she also coordinates the on-campus tutoring. And so um, we do a lot with those offices as I'm sure many of you do. And so it is nice to have a good collaborator over there. I haven't seen any more questions come in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do some wrap up, but um, we have time set aside. If you think of anything else, feel free to put it in the chat box. Um, so I'd like to thank you all for joining us today. And I'd like to thank Cecilia um, for presenting. I hope everyone will take a few moments to complete our survey, which Christy just posted in the chat again, um, to let us know our thoughts about, let us know your thoughts about the presentation today and about our programming in general. As a reminder, the recording of this presentation will be available to PALA members early next week and on the CRD YouTube channel. If you're not a PALA member and you're interested in becoming a member, please feel free to email me and I'll put my email in the chat and I'll have the appropriate person contact you. I also invite you to contact me with your suggestions for future discussions and presentations. And I most definitely invite you to contact me if you would like to present. And thank you for Cecilia for adding your contact information to the chat as well. Yeah, and thank you all so much again for being here and for your great suggestions and everything like that. And thank you, Amy and Christy and the Connect and Communicate team again for hosting this and for this opportunity. Thanks for presenting. <laughs>